Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue watching Framing Britney Spears. I'm going to react to it. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. As I always say, I'm purely speculating. I, I haven't assessed her, so I can't really say for sure what's going on. Let's get to the show. Of her driving with her infant son in her lap on Monday. The headline of the New York Post yesterday, Britney tripping outside a New York hotel Thursday while holding her eight-month-old son in one hand and a glass of water in the other. Yeah. That's just got to be awful. I mean, we have enough parent shaming in our society as it is in public. Now, I'm not going to defend having a baby on your lap while you're driving. And I don't know the circumstances. Maybe she was just driving down the block. Who knows? But the amount, uh, I mean, imagine yourself, some of you young parents or parents of young children, I should say. Imagine if everything you ever did was, you know, photographed and and everyone was looking for the headline and the front page uh, caption to get a lot of money because that's what we're looking at. We're looking at photographers who aren't necessarily interested, and I'm not going to accuse all journalists, but a lot of the paparazzi, they're, what they're doing is a job. They're trying to get a shot so that they can sell the picture for a lot of money. And as long as the public, us, consume these kinds of photographs, then the paparazzi are going to work even harder and there's going to be more and more paparazzi and they're going to try to take a picture in very compromising places and they'll spin a story in whatever way they can to make money. That's all they're interested in. Are they really interested in Britney's child? Are they really interested in helping Britney as a parent? Or are they interested in money? Money, money, money. We just have to see it that way. And so I urge everyone, just think about the sort of things you click on. When you're on the internet and you're, you see a, a headline, you know, Britney Spears or famous person of today or some kind of thing, think about before you click on it. Because as soon as you click on it, you are validating that clickbait. You're, are, you're saying yes to that. I support that sort of journalism. Because as soon as you open that page, all the ads come rushing in and the page makes money. Every time you click on that thing, the page makes a penny. You pile up all those pennies and you have what we have. It's sort of be like buying clothing that you know is made in a sweatshop. When you buy it, you're supporting the abuse of human beings. And so I'm sure you all know that, but let's all just remind ourselves. And we're seeing an example of how Britney was abused by that system. And frankly, a lot of famous people are, Kanye West, these kinds of things. You were photographed, I guess, by the paparazzi again, pursuing you. Mm -hmm. And there was Sean on your lap in the car. Take me through what happened there. I went to Starbucks and I see a bunch of photographers and I'm scared and I want to get out of the situation and my baby's crying. They're coming up on the, you know, the sides of the car. Now, I completely believe that from Brittany. Is, that po is it possible that she's trying to obscure bad parenting? I don't know. I obviously have no data on that. But that is a very credible story. They have shown us some clips of how oppressive and pressing, the physically pressing the paparazzi can be on her body. Imagine you're a small woman and a press of big men with cameras in your face are trying to get close to you. That would be terrifying. So I could absolutely imagine being like, we don't have time for the car seat right now. I need to get out of here. I could absolutely imagine. That. Does it justify it? I don't know, but I, I could imagine what she's saying to be accurate. Brittany files for sole custody of their two kids. The very next day, Kevin files for sole custody himself. And in her book, Brittany's mother, Lynn, writes that she thinks Brittany was suffering from postpartum depression. So who knows, postpartum depression and depression in and around birth, so you can have prepartum depression, postpartum depression, is a very common thing, much more common than people talk about. Also, anxiety, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, panic attacks is also very common. We talk about postpartum depression, there's also postpartum anxiety disorders. There's just something about the change in the hormones or even just how difficult pregnancy and birth can be for some people can definitely trigger conditions like anxiety disorders and mood disorders for sure. And 
some people think of it, ah, oh, you know, you'll get over it. It's just hormonal. No, these are severe disorders. It's not just being a little down for people who have full-blown cases of it. It is a full-on depressive episode that could last years, usually around a year or so in a typical case. And we're talking about you can't get out of bed. You, you can't, you're not motivated to do anything. You, you don't want to take care of your kid. You might not even like your kid. You might not like anyone because of the way that your brain is operating at the time. You might be hopeless and maybe even suicidal. And by the way, if you do suffer from suicidal thoughts or even depression, make sure you call the suicide prevention hotline. Just Google suicide prevention hotline and you can either text, chat, or, or call someone because suicidal thoughts are things that usually come on in a, in a moment. And if we can help people get through those moments, they usually thank everyone uh, afterwards say, thank you for being with me. I feel much better right now. So make sure you get the help that you need. And obviously get a therapist is, is important as well. Now, did Brittany actually suffer from this? Who knows? Usually when I hear these kinds of reports, I usually think it's probably true because people don't usually like to talk about this sort of thing. And also given, I think what we find out, I don't know much about Brittany's story, <laughs> to tell you the truth. I, I've, I've heard little bits and pieces. I know there was at least some thoughts that maybe she suffered from a mood disorder later on. It wouldn't be uncommon for one postpartum depression to get the ball rolling regarding an ongoing episodic depression disorder. But also as we age through our 20s, this is when our mood disorders tend to really manifest. It's not unusual for someone to not really suffer from any mood problems, but then at the age of 25 or 30 to suddenly have a full-blown mood disorder that lasts maybe even the rest of their life with management, with medication, which, with therapy. So I don't know if we're hearing that. I don't know what they're going to say. Let's find out. What the fuck, man? Stop it! 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 Right, that's the other element of this is the fear involved. Because you know that Brittany is getting death threats that, like I was saying earlier, a certain small percentage of people that watch you are disturbed enough or whatever, have reasons to actually want to threaten your life. Well, you get that and you get this sense like those people could be anywhere in public. And then you're surrounded by people who are aggressively, violently trying to get in your face and take pictures, maybe even trying to provoke you to do something so that they can get a picture of you getting angry because that'll, that'll get them 10 grand right there maybe. And yeah, that'd be really frightening. This has been a debate that people have been talking about uh, since this time, which is, is this legal? Because imagine if we did this to someone who wasn't famous. Let's just say I just decided to get 10 of my friends and we were gonna follow around my neighbor. Every time my neighbor came out of the house, we crowded around her and took pictures of her and you know she got in her car. I don't think anyone would consider that to be a legal behavior. I think that would be considered harassment, right? So why do we allow it to happen to famous people? Well, I, I get the debate because on some level, People are saying, well, freedom of the press. If you're a famous person, then the press has a right to try to take pictures of you. But on the other hand, why do we allow human beings, whether they're famous or not, to be traumatized by the press? That there's, there's got to be an easier way to do this, like a perimeter or something, or some kind of volume thing where, you, well, okay, you're, you're allowed to have this many photographers within this amount of feet of someone. I mean, they're right up on her. I'm, I'm guessing they touch her a lot of times. So just imagine that. That would just be traumatic. I guarantee you, for me, if I had to go through this, even just for a day, I would be traumatized. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. That would be hard on me, on my physiology. That would be hard to deal with. And I'm going to tell you, I'd probably punch someone. You see that happen with some celebrities where they'll just, you know, haul off and punch someone. Bjork, I think, punched someone once. And I can absolutely imagine myself doing that. I wouldn't want to, but you push someone far enough and you just say, get out of my face. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just, and you just wonder that the literal physiological and psychological trauma that some people, and really Brittany would have been the main target of this during this time, would go through. Yeah.
What do you think it'll So we've seen a lot of this behavior from her. I don't know if this was a pattern of hers. And I don't know if this is just her way of expressing herself, but often what this means is we're regressing. You'll see kids do this sometimes where they'll they'll cover their face as a way of trying to hide or they're trying to hold something in and I wonder what's happening for her. It could be an indication of a heightened level of distress that she's going through and feeling trapped and maybe even touching on re-triggering some traumas she went through when she was young. I don't know, of course, that's just complete speculation, but I, if, if I were to talk with her, I'd say, you know, when you do this, what, what kind of emotions are you experiencing? How distressed are you feeling in that moment? Paparazzi to leave you alone? Um. I don't know. I don't know. All right, so that's an interesting insight or question into her. What does that mean? So the interviewer said, do you, do you want to ask the paparazzi to leave you alone? She says, I don't know. I don't know. And then she starts to cry. I wonder what's going on for her in that moment. Is it, yes, I absolutely want to ask the paparazzi to leave me alone, but I feel like I don't have the power as a woman or as a performer to say that. Or maybe my, maybe my agents are telling me, no, you, have to, you want the paparazzi because it keeps you in the headlines. It keeps you famous. Maybe she's worried about financial security and she's thinking, well, if the paparazzi go away, then I'm not famous anymore and I'm not making any more money. Or is she feeling like I don't have the right to say things because everyone has been beating me down emotionally, including the paparazzi, into thinking that I don't have any agency? We actually saw a little bit of this with Paris Hilton as well, that a part of this lifestyle, of which I have no knowledge of, but at least the impression I get, is there's so many people around them that are controlling them and telling them what to do. It, it, when you look at people like this, you think, oh, they must be on the top of the world. They must have all this autonomy and freedom. But a lot of times there's this cage of fame and cage of agents and, and handlers who are in this constant state of managing you and barking at you and telling you what to do that over time you might just learn just be a leaf in the wind and do what anyone tells me to do. I'm just, I'll, okay, you're telling, okay, I'll do that. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. Because there's just so many demands and there's not a lot of people actually in your corner that are stopping and saying, how are you feeling? What do you need right now? What do you want? Can I help you get what you want in this moment? Do you want us to do this or would you rather not? Would you rather take a break? How often are these people given that opportunity, particularly women? Is that one of your biggest wishes? All right. Well, we just got our answer. And kudos to the interviewer for taking the time to care. Is that one of your biggest wishes? And she, she nods her head. She can't say the words, probably because she's been denied that opportunity. And again, I wonder about her childhood. I wonder how about, about the way she was raised. I wonder about whether or not she was ever allowed to feel like she had agency, to feel like she could say what she wants. It, I don't know. Maybe she was raised really well. I, I just have no knowledge. So as I always say, don't use YouTube as a replacement for therapy. If you need a therapist, get one. You deserve it. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve that as well. You really, really do.